A lot of us grew up only hearing tales and stories of the legendary Samuel Okwaraji, who died in action for Nigeria against Angola. Have you heard about the Spy Ghost player that lost his life while playing for Nigeria? In case you've not, kindly pull a chair, sit back, relax while I give you the full details of Nigeria's legendary footballer Samuel Okwaraji, who died in action for Nigeria. He was actually known as Samuel Sochukuma Okwaraji, one of Nigeria's football stars that slumped on the football pitch and never got up again in August 12, 1989. Sam Okwaraji, as popularly called, was a professional footballer who played internationally for Nigeria. Surprisingly, he was also a qualified lawyer who had a master's in international law from the Pontifical Lateran University of Rome. Fatherless at age 5, modesty saved up to send him to Italy to study because of his exceptional brilliance. By the time he was 23 years old, he had already gotten both his BSc and MSc in law and at 25, he was going for his doctorate degree in law. However, something happened. Outside his love for education, he loved football and decided to play professionally. He started his career in Ukraine at the age of 21 before going on to play for three other clubs. In 1988, he was called to play for the Nigerian national team. That's where the problem started. His clubs were not in support of him traveling to play for Nigeria and he had this to say, I am a lawyer, you know, and you signed me to play football for certain conditions, but I don't think it included reselling my services to my country. You or your club cannot stop me from playing for my country. Let me tell you, I am going to represent my country whether you like it or not. These were the exact words of Samuel Okwaraji. He continued representing Nigeria against the wishes of his club. He flew himself to and fro matches for Nigeria and refused match bonuses because he felt it was an honor. His club still didn't like it but he still persisted. On the 12th of August 1989, sadly, during the Nigerian vs Angola in Lagos, it happened. On the 77th minute, he slumped and never got up and by the time he got to the hospital, he had died. But was it how simple Samuel Okwaraji died? No. Sit back and let me give you a full gist of what had transpired that afternoon. On that hot and dry Saturday of August 12, 1989, Nigerians never knew that they were walking through the valley of death, trooping out in thousands. Soccer-loving Nigerians filled everywhere or every space available at the National Stadium Surulere four hours before the commencement of an important soccer game for the Green Eagles of Nigeria. The match was actually between the Green Eagles of Nigeria versus the Angola national team in what was supposed to be as the second to the last Group C match in the African zone of the Italian 90 World Cup qualifying series, having lost 1-2 away to Gabon. It was a match that Green Eagles must win to stay in the contention for the World Cup ticket, which its arch rival Cameroon was also seriously fighting for, with all the seats taken at the national stadium. Some Nigerians who couldn't make it to the national stadium were glued to their father's 19 inches TV set and Panasonic radio for the live telecast and commentary of the match in a newspaper littered sitting room, anxiously waiting to see Green Eagles beat Angola. The TV camera moved across the stadium and commentators provided updates on all that went on during the match. Of all, Samuel Sochukuma Okwaraji was the main man getting all the media attention at the time. From the print to the electronic media, the Olu-born enigmatic soccer star was getting attention because unlike most African internationals, Sam Okwaraji came to the Nigerian football from Europe rather than the other way around. His first club, the Italian first division side AS Roma, signed him at the age of 20 as a young Okwaraji decided to lay aside a law degree from the University of Rome and concentrate on professional football. Born in 1964 in Olu in the eastern part of Nigeria, he left Nigeria in 1982 to study international law in Italy. Very actively involved in the academic pursuit, he still kept alive his dream of being Nigeria's Michael Platini and Brazilian Falcao, who were both his soccer role models. Armed with his first and second degree in law, Energetic Okwaraji moved to the old Yugoslavia where he played for club Dynamo Zagreb with a brief stint in Dynamo. The man who speaks Igbo English, Italian, Spanish, German, and Yugoslavian fluently, later joined an Australian second division club side. It was at the club that German Stuttgart signed him for six years, not long into the contract. He was loaned to a second division SSV ULM 1848. He did very well to a certain point at the club that they couldn't play without him. At the point, it was no Okwaraji, no ULM. And that was a popular slogan then. 
it was not surprising that when he had the opportunity to play for Nigeria, his country, after he has sent several letters to the Nigerian Football Association without any response, the club manager asked NFA to pay an estimated cost of about £45,000 for Okwaraji's match bonus and an expected loss in the club's gate taking for a period in which Okwaraji would be on national duty. The amount was later negotiated to 15,000, but why would NFA agree to cough out about 15,000 in an era when there were so many options? It was however noted that Okoraji was more than a soccer player. He was an emblem of value to the NFA at the time and a microscopic Nigerian society. Therefore, he was viewed as a channel for development and advancement of the Nigerian football team. Honesty, dedication and accountability were among the invaluable qualities that this gifted lawyer and footballer symbolized. On many occasions, the footballer paid his way to play without asking for a fund, unlike some benchwarmers. He was indeed committed to the service of his nation. He was not afraid to put his career on line for his country. This was indeed the kind of person Samuel Okwaraji is. Little wonder his death was a national disaster. Full of energy, he anchored the Eagles midfield that had eaten Africa's Maradona, a sensational left winger at the time. Stephen Keshi and a whole others dashing forward to pull down the walls of Berlin erected by the Angolan. Few minutes into the game, Samuel Okwaraji was flashed his first and only yellow card in international soccer until the hour of his death. Unknown to him and the hissing spectator, the final red card was going to come before the game of death ran its full course. About 15 minutes to the end of the game, the center referee sent one of his dangerous Angolan marker off. With the host of them watching the red-carded Angolan arguing with the centre referee, Fate handed Okwaraji a red card. He slumped on the left side of the field, very close to Bala Ali and another Angolan player in the shirt number four. Before the maddened crowd could return their gaze to the fallen hero, he had gone forever. Forever was he gone. Okwaraji, who astonished Nigerian fans with his amazing skills in the debutant for Eagles on January 30, 1988 at the Nnamdi Way Stadium, Enugu, eternally left after he diligently serviced his fatherland with his money, skills and talent. Barely 25 years old as at the time of his death, he was a great achiever, held one of the records for the fastest goal ever scored in the history of African Cup of Nations. He also had several honorary Man of the Match awards in most games that he featured for the Green Eagles. Twice at Morocco 88 African Cup of Nations, he was named Man of the Match. Another sad thing to remember was that days before he died, Samuel Okwaraji, who was completing his PhD thesis, had signed a $450,000 contract with the Belgian club. Sadly, this was the end of one of Nigeria's most dedicated and beautiful footballer of all time. He indeed dreamt big for Nigeria, however, his time on this earth was cut short. Okwaraji remains an icon to those who watched him play and to the entire national team. He was one of those who inspired a lot of players like JJ Okucha, Kanu Wankwo, Rashidi Yekini and all. Although it has been more than 30 years since he died, Samuel Sochukuma Okwaraji still lives in the heart of the Nigerian football. It is indeed very difficult for the Nigerian football lovers to forget an icon like Samuel Okwaraji totally. Guys, drop your comments in the comment section and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.